misconceptions about the fact like, oh, a man providing for a woman is unrealistic, whatever. But why is it never unrealistic when a single mother is providing for three, four, five, six, seven children, and that is okay, and that is normal, and she should be able to take care of that financially, but a man cannot provide for one single woman. Like, why are we babying men these days? Because people find it anti-feminist that a man is taking care of a woman, but I think it's anti-feminist that a woman is literally doing everything. Like, she has to take care of the children, of the home, she has to be a wife, cook, nanny, cleaner, everything, and then on top of that, she also has to work. Who is winning here? Men have so much advantage, even in the, the wage, like the money that they make, everything, and they're gonna sit there and just watch me, paying for a man. She's pretending like these single mothers who take care of three children don't get child support from the fathers or financial support from the government. If she's going to make an argument, at the very least, she could include all of the facts. She's an idiot. What are your non-negotiables when it comes to dating? For me, if I don't know what the plan is for the date, at least the night before, I'm not coming. I don't care if that makes me sound entitled or whatever you want to call me. I'm a planner. And I like to know before I go to bed what my plan is for the next day. So if you haven't let me know, we will have to reschedule. I was meant to go on a date last night, hadn't heard from the guy all week, which by the way is fine, I don't need to speak to someone all the time. But literally Friday came around, didn't know if I was seeing him. And he texted me like mid-morning like, hey, are we still on for tonight? No, no, sorry, we're not, I made other plans. I appreciate people have busy weeks, they sort of take it day by day. But if you want to go on a date with me, you need to plan somewhere in advance and let me know what that plan is. That's my non-negotiable. What are your guys' thoughts? Do you agree? And what are your non-negotiables? She says she's a planner and likes to know what she's doing the next day before she goes to bed. If she's such a good planner, why doesn't she plan the date herself? She's useless! Being attracted to men feels like a mental illness. Like I can't tell the difference between my own mental illness and that kind of mental illness, you know? They're lost! Can someone please tell me what this is called? Right, when I start to talk to like somebody, okay, I look for any little thing so I can block them. So, like, you know, if they don't reply for, like, a day, I'll be like, bye, blocked. Um, even if I like them. It's just, like, it makes me really feel relieved when I get to press that block button. Do you know what I mean? And I know I over-exaggerate these small things, but it's like, I'm looking for it. And I feel a lot of, like, relief when I've done it. But obviously that's not going to get me very far. That's not going to get me into a relationship, is it, girls? <laughs> I'm going to be single forever at this point. But what is it called? Why do I do that? Is there only therapists on here? Because I need to get to the bottom of it. But fucking therapy in London is like £8 an hour and I'd rather not. So if anyone could tell me and then I can look into it and then I can work on it. Do you know what I mean? Thank you very much. Other than the fact modern women are single because men don't want to commit to them any longer. The second reason why they're single is because they reject decent men for insignificant reasons. Facts. Huh? I got it, I got it. It's old though. <laughs> old alcohol bro. I think we should dash it, man. Bro, it's all broken, bro. It's not even worth it, man. Let's dash it. I'm a dash it, yeah? Thank you. 